Good morning. Uh, I've already made myself a cup of coffee and I am in a very beautiful spot and I thought would you like to see what I see every morning? <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> this is an area very near Sedona called Wet Beaver Creek. And yeah, okay, I know the jokes. Yes, there is a dry beaver creek. <laughs> but oh my gosh, this is just, this is amazing. Wow. And I have right here a perfect seat. So I can just come out here in the morning with a cup of coffee and sit down. And uh, yeah. Just look at this beautiful, beautiful scenery. Oh my gosh. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. <laughs> This is a really amazing part of Arizona, and there is so much to see here. So, yeah, today I'm going to go out and explore something amazing. And, uh, yeah, I'm just really excited. <laughs> This is so incredible. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the cliff dwellings here were built around the year 1100 by the Sanawa Indians and were lived in from about 1100 to 1400. This was part of a larger thriving community all around the Verde Valley.
this is Montezuma's Well. And it's amazing. Oh my gosh, I can't get over it. Uh, Montezuma, of course, was Aztec, and that's a terrible name because this doesn't have anything to do with Aztecs at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was built and abandoned before uh, Montezuma was even born. More than a million gallons a day of water push up through springs deep down in this well. No fish can live in here because it's high in carbonates and arsenic, but it has five species of animals that live only here. There is the Montezuma leech, which exists only here, and don't worry, it doesn't drink blood. There's also an amphipod, the Montezuma well amphipod, which is like a little teeny tiny shrimp without a carapace. It's also unique to this space here. And of course, the leeches eat the amphipods. <laughs> and that is their food source. And the amphipods eat algae. And what's so amazing is this is a very healthy ecosystem for what it is because uh, about 10% of the water in here is refreshed every day. That's how much water is pushing up out of this spring. And they say that the water in this well fell as rain 10,000 years ago. And what happened was the rain fell, it filtered through all the layers of, of rock and dirt until it got to an impenetrable layer of limestone. And at that point, it just moved along until a fault in the ground weakened the surface enough that it could break through here. And this has been a source of, uh, of water for thousands of years. There's also a species of water scorpion that lives here. It's really amazing. You might wonder why, if a million to a million and a half gallons of water push up through this spring every day, why it doesn't just overflow. Well, <laughs> it's right here. This is uh, a fracture in the wall that allows water to escape right here. And they say it takes seven minutes for water to come from here to go out the other side. <laughs> it's really, really amazing. There are these beautiful cliff dwellings here. Sadly, at the turn of the last century, when the first European settlers came, they didn't respect the native cultures or lives, and they took as souvenirs basically everything that could be taken. So there's been a lot of culture lost here, so it's, that's kind of a sad fact, but just being here amongst, you know, 900-year-old ruins, <laughs> pretty amazing. I can tell you, just standing under the overhang here, it's so much cooler than being in the sun. This would have been a great home. <laughs> Along the rim here, there's another Pueblo. There's a whole settlement here, and it was quite large. As many as 40 rooms were here. And these date to about the year 1300. And they found evidence of at least 40 villages in the nearby Verde Valley region here. So this would have been part of a thriving community. Uh, probably lots of trade, lots of travel going on. Yeah, just really amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
This right here is where the water from Montezuma's well comes out of the rim. And as you see, it flows into this canal. And they believe the original canal was built in the year 900. And right off on the other side is Wet Beaver Creek. In the year 900, the Indians built this canal to bring this water to crops and other things all the way down to as far as Montezuma's castle. So this is Montezuma's Castle. Again, it's a terrible name for a super awesome cool place. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the Aztecs. This was built between about 1100 and 1400 by the Sinawa Indians. By around 1450, it was abandoned. There's lots of really good reasons to build in an alcove like this. Uh, the best reason is that it stays much cooler in the summer and much warmer in the winter. And right now, I really wish I was up there because it is hot today. It's definitely in the 90s, it's hot. <laughs> Another good reason to build in the cliffs is the ground I'm standing on right now is actually part of the floodplain. Right in front of me is Wet Beaver Creek. And so this would periodically flood down here. So of course, yourself and all your belongings would be safe up there. Also, clearly, you would be safe from uh, raiding other tribes. Uh, so as a defense, yeah, can't get much better of a defense than that, can you? The cliffs here are limestone, and they're pretty soft. And so they built inside of an alcove that was created by erosion. That building, it's five stories high and has about 20 rooms. It could have held about 50 people at one time. It's so well preserved because it's kept out of the elements, plus it's protected from people raiding it and uh, climbing up on it just by its sheer height. So that's why it's lasted for so many years. There's another whole really cool encampment here with lots of little alcoves that people could have lived in. And if you look closely, a lot of the roofs are blackened from uh, fires. So, cooking up lots of good food right in there. <laughs> Amazing. There's evidence of the Sinawa Indians living here as early as the year 700. Uh, they probably briefly left during the eruption of the Sunset Volcano, which is only 60 miles north of here. But by 1100, they were back here strong again and living in this entire valley. Of course, with uh, 
Wet Beaver Creek being right there, this was a beautiful area to be in. Here is Wet Beaver Creek, and there is the cliffs. And this was the lifeline for the cinema people and the people that followed them, the Yavapai Apache and others. Um, this used to flood regularly and flood this whole area, but as you can see, there's now a retaining wall. Uh, and this area is just covered in these beautiful Arizona sycamores with the beautiful speckled white and gray uh, bark and their bright, bright green canopy just lightens up this whole canyon. It's so amazing. The sun is going down and I poured myself just a little bit of sangria and uh, my friend Ren has made dinner. So I'm going to head over there and we're going to have some spectacular foods. Woohoo! <laughs> Dinner. dinner! What's for dinner? And dinner tonight is provided by this beautiful lady. Thank you! Awesome. You're welcome. Oh my gosh. So, for dinner tonight is some barbecued acorn squash that is looking beautiful. And salad! And another gorgeous, gorgeous salad. Alright, eat, eat, eat! <laughs> Alright. This is wonderful. Woof. All right. I love squash. Butternut squash, pumpkin squash, this squash, all squash. <laughs> all right. Mm. Amazing. Well, it's a beautiful evening. The sun is setting, so we're going to watch the sunset and eat. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.